It's time for the real deal. Hey everybody, Liquid Jake Cloud here, and today this is my first full 6 on 6 Wi Fi battle with Wingy. Now, Wingy's another YouTuber, his channel will be in the description because that's tradition for Wi Fi Pokemon battles on YouTube. So, you're probably looking at my team and thinking, what the fuck, where's your other team? Well, that team, that was kind of just for shits and giggles. And this team was really quickly thrown together, like, within 10 minutes, I was browsing the box of my game, and I didn't really think it through that much. Like, an Infernape would rape this team completely and utterly. And also, what well, you just heard, the little timing with the music, took for fucking ever. So appreciate it. Now, I lead up with It Takes Two, and you probably get his attacks going, Wait, how the fuck do you say that for only two attacks? Well, you can delete attacks. So I gave him Fake Out and Last Resort. Now, the strategy behind this guy is that... He makes your opponent with Fake with Fake Out, because that's the fastest move in the game. It will always strike first, to my knowledge. And then... Go for last resort, which you can only use when you use all of your other attacks. And it does an incredible amount of damage. Plus, with uh, it takes two, his ability boosts the powers of normal type moves. So that increases it by 1.5. And same type of attack bonus also increases it by 1.5. And I probably got the equation wrong in my head. But he also holds an island that increases it by 1.5. So it does an incredibly same amount of damage considering that it's an ambipom using it. So, I realized when this battle started, I don't have any Pokemon to move Stealth Rock, which is what he used. Well, I have Pokemon to just didn't bring with me. And that does entry damage. Like, it takes away 16th of your health when you send it Pokemon. Unless they resist it, where it does 132 of their health. If they're weak to rock, it does 25%. Times for weak to rock, it does 50%. So, trying to catch up now. I kill this guy's score. Incredibly well, now I'm deciding to switch out because it takes two for probably first time in his life didn't get freaking raped by anything. So out comes Xlor against Scizor. Now he predicts a switch and goes for Sword Stance. So he's looking pretty damn scary, but I'm thinking it's okay, Xlor can take this and use Fire Punch and rape his ship. So I go and do just that, go for Fire Punch, but he carries Super Power, which is an incredibly powerful fighting type move, and Exor gets his ass raped. Like, didn't even get to appear. Well, he did appear, but he got fucking raped while he came out. So I'm going, okay, fuck me with the chainsaw. I have nothing to fucking take uh, this scissor now. So it's not liquid. And I go straight for the Protect, just to see if he will switch out, or do anything that doesn't involve raping me. And Liquid is a female. Well, fuck. Well, okay, so he takes a lot of size move. Uh, I don't know if he's going to post this side of the battle or not, but... If you're wondering what he's thinking about, go there, because I don't know. He goes for Bug Bite for the same type of attack for us, I'm guessing, and... Thanks for Protect, I take no damage. Now here, I think about switching out, maybe trying to counter type, but I decide to just stay in and go for Surf and see how much it would do. Now here, I get so fucking lucky. I... First of all, that did a great amount of damage, and I could probably take on one more attack. But the second thing I learned is that I'm faster than him. Now, if he was faster than me, he now has plus three attack. Like, plus, by that I mean three stat boosts total. Because Sword Stance just hit it by two, Super Power Lord hit by one. Pretty much he's in position to rape everything on my team. But I am faster. So I managed to take that scissor out, and my team saying this is a save for another Pokemon rape. Painfully. So he sends out his Snorlax called Lazy Oaf, which is a pretty good nickname, got admit. 
And I say stay in, but not really. And instead of staying in, I go out to Metal Gear Rex. I am loving his music's timing right now. Holy shit. Anyway. So out comes Metal Gear Rex. Like a boss. He goes for Body Slam. It does jack freaking daily balls. Take that profanity. So I decided to go for Thunder Wave, predicting his switch out into uh, his fire type, Magmortar. And yeah. You have to deal with the longer wait time since we're all actually thinking about our freaking attacks. But Rex takes a bias extremely well, which I am proud about. So he does just what I predicted, goes down to his fire type, and I go for Thunder Wave, get that thing paralyzed. And I am feeling pretty good right now. Because that fire type is not there to kill Dorachi or Ponch or Melgar Rex. So I say I go straight for the Earthquake. And if I remember correctly, he makes a good call here when he does. Oh wait, no. Never mind. Memory fuck. But I hit it. It does an extremely good amount, but he predicts me to switch into Liquid, which honestly I probably should have done. But he also gets a paralyzed off the Thunderbolt, which doesn't really hurt Rex, because Rex isn't really out there for speed. But here he makes a good call. And he switches out into his Dragon Knight, which makes Earthquake not do anything, and this would have been a perfect matchup if he wasn't battling me and my Pokemon didn't carry his random mass punches. I kind of like the elemental, elemental punches. So he goes for the Earthquake. Rex gets hit pretty hard. One more should take him out. But he goes for the Ice Punch right beside that thing's head. Look at that. Bam. So Dragonite freaking survives. And... Now Rex is in a terrible position, but I stay in, just go for another Ice Punch, hoping maybe I'll live. But he goes for Earthquake, and like a true Metal Gear, he doesn't fucking die. He takes it like a beast, gets a critical hit Ice Punch, which the crit did not matter on account of, like, he had no HP left anyway. And Rex freaking survives. And Shia Moses. Forever. And ever. Until Snake turns old. And takes him out of Shadow Moses Island. To fight Ray. Yeah. So those rocks are still spinning around. Those are like fucking psychic rocks. So they send that star me. I'm fucked. I go for explosion. And what's faster? Giant iron robot? Or fastest fuck starfish? The starfish. So, Rex goes down. And I side here, switch on to It Takes Two for the win. And thankfully, he wasn't packing a Rotom. If he was, It Takes Two would have been pretty worthless. Because Rotom's a ghost type. So he switches out Starmie and sends out Magmortar. And I guess that's a good call. I don't really know his team's offense and all that that well. So I go for Fake Out and he gets a Flame Body and this makes It Takes Two completely worthless. Because getting burned cuts your attack in half until the burn goes away. Which it doesn't unless you have Heal Bell or some ability that will heal your status. So I decided to stay in because at this point he's like I said, worthless. Might as well let him do as much as he can. Which is what he just did. Because now he gets crushed by a giant fucking cat. And dies from the burn. So my pink fucking monkey dies. And I'm sad because I like my pink monkey.
So I slice it up. Pow! And here I misclick and hit bullet punch. I meant to hit uh, meter mash, but my brain wasn't really working because I got kind of distracted. So, go for the bullet punch by accident. Does jack daily balls. And this freaking fat cat has balls. It just jumped on top of a freaking scary ass robot thingy. So here I'm thinking about switching, I'm not really sure if I should, not sure about Dorothy's defense and what I can take and what I can't take and all that crap because I have a choice on him on punch, I have choice band. So he's locked into his bullet punch which is doing like nothing. So either way I decided to hope to get a critical hit and then it goes for rust. And I'm like, fuck me! And the poop hole. So I stopped Jirachi, because now it's safe to, I mean, the thing's asleep. And Jirachi comes out, look at that. Look how fucking tiny the thing is. So, Snorlax goes to sleep talk, and it gets a rust. So, nothing really happens. So I pull a Wild Chase here, and yes, I stole this thing from Wild Chase. Go for the U-turn with Jirachi. Well, at least Wild Chase is old strip, old uh, playstyle, where everything had U-turn, especially Jirachi. So I use U-turn, which lets me switch out to another Pokemon to attack, to go back into Paunch. Lazy Oak goes to Sleep Talk, and Freaking, imagine if someone in your, like, house slept walk and decided to fucking jump on top of you when it's, like, when he or she was, like, sleepwalking. That'd be pretty fucking scary. So here I do what I would always do. At least in my all my other battles. Do what to do? Blow yourself up. And I get crit, which did not matter at all. Because choice band, plus the guy's defense can cut in half, plus... I believe 401 attack stat, which is what Punch has. Nothing surviving that. So I sent out Jirachi. And he sends out Starmie. And here, I think I lucked out. For the time being, at least. Goes for Hydro Pump, and it misses. Thank God, I don't know how much it would have done to hit. So I use U-turn and I get the fuck out of there. So out comes Liquid. And here in any other scenario, Vaporeon would have lost if it wasn't mine. Because this Starmie is packing freaking Thunderbolt. So he goes for straight for the cover. And, unfortunately for him, I'm carrying a hidden power, I believe, Bug. So, I have a super effective move against him. And it is good game. Because Vaporeon survives the Thunderbolt like a boss. And Starmie goes down to hidden power or Bug. Why am I carrying hidden power Bug? Because I'm fucking me. I don't know why. So that is the battle, good game wingy. So everyone, wake, comment, sub, and check out his channel, which will be in the description box below. And bye.